Hey, saxophone friends. Uh, Joey Resendez here. Um, here we are, um, another year, another round of these, another round of three etudes for practicing all region, all slash, all state music um, for high school. Um, this is the tutorial video for etude number one. This is Fairling etude number 42, D flat major. Um, this is probably my favorite Fairling in, in the whole book. Um, I, I just think it's great. So I've been waiting for this one for a while be honest with you um, I thought it's been I thought it was gonna be one of the last like five or so years but it was finally one this year so I'm excited um so first things first with all of the etudes you have to learn the scale okay so D flat scale five flats B E A D and G um, I would learn the scale with both the fork G flat and the regular G flat, and also with the this B flat and the and the side B flat, learn it up and down using both um, fingerings for both notes. Um, maybe do one way going up, the other way doing get, um, on the way down, and then flip flop it, and just kind of get get really comfortable with each of those fingerings. So. <laughs> Make sure you're comfortable with both um get really comfortable especially with the fork g flat so that's anybody that doesn't know that's um g flat is the enharmonic tone of f sharp and we would finger that fork with just like an f with this side key down here using your ring finger okay this is the high f sharp key up here some of your horns may not have it um this one down here you all should have y'all better have this key this is the fork g flat key or f fork f sharp okay um, also practice the court, the, the scale full range. So go all the way up to high G flat. If your if your horn has a high F sharp key and all the way down to low B flat and then come up to the note, to your starting note of, of D flat. So so just make sure you're really, really comfortable with the scale. Until you can do that, I wouldn't even start practicing the, the etude, okay? All right, going to the etude now. Um, we're in 3-4. We have, um, uh, ultimately, you're going to be feeling this, um, this etude in one, one beat per measure. But to start out with, you're going to be learning it in 3-4. So make sure you take your, your metronome and put it on the quarter note pulse. So three beats in one measure. So something around everyone's going to be a little different so this is 80 to the quarter note so this is really slow all right so just make sure that you're practicing it with the eight with the, in the quarter note pulse to start off with okay um the articulation is not the central idea idea in this etude, but it's really important. Okay, um, there's lots of big art, big uh, slurs in this piece. Um, some go for a measure or more. Um, just make sure that you're starting each one of these slurs um, with a tongue. The tongue, the first note of all the slurs is going to be tongued, just like all the other music that you play. Um, alrighty, so. Just to get started here, I'm not going to go through every single note um, in this video on what fingering I use. Um, I tend to use this B flat, you know, a lot, unless it's in a scalar pattern, um, which is a lot of this etude is in. So if I'm going between a C and a B flat, I will almost always go with, use a side. I, I don't like to flip flop. Okay. Um, and with the G flat. Um, there's going to be a lot of G flats that have um, uh, F naturals around, um, either before or after them. And in those cases, I would use I would use the fork, unless you can't, unless it's coming from or going to um, a note where that makes it impossible. Say if you're going from a G flat to an E flat, there's no, it's impossible to not get a blip in there. Um, so in those cases, you'll you're forced to use regular. Okay. Um, so starting out in the first measure. 
Make sure you get the articulation here, you guys. First two notes are slurs. Ta ta. All the way slur into the next bar. And then just tongue again on the A flat and the second note of measure two. And then right here on measure three, you're tonguing the first note right here on the D flat. So it's already a little bit different from the first you know, two bars. Now I'm gonna say something maybe a little controversial here. Um, for this arpeggio going up to the high F, um, your private teachers may sh wanna shoot me for telling you this, but um, when you are playing this at a fast tempo, you might not need your high E key when playing that high F. Now, it makes it flat for sure. It flattens the pitch um, quite a bit actually. Um, if you're going slow, if you're going quickly, you won't notice it. So here, listen, this is measure three. That's the with the high E key. Now, hear it without. There's not a whole lot of difference there, okay? If you're nice and firm, which you should be, um, you can get away with not using this key on a lot of instruments. This works a lot better um, on tenor and berry. Alto, it's, um, it may be a little suspect when you're playing slowly. When you're playing quickly, you might not need that key. So you could just play that whole you know, bit with the right hand. Or sorry, with the left hand. And in the in the recording that I put out of this A2, I never used that key um, in the beginning here and in the bottom um, in measure whatever it is, 50 or so. Um, so it's up to you. Um, I, I, I don't even think I need to use it, so. All right. Well, like I said, four G flats throughout the scalar passages. Um, so make sure you're using that. Measure four, four G flat. Right here, um, this is measure measure seven. You have to use the regular, going from the E flat to the G flat. See how that works? But you can use the fourth G, uh, G flat on the second G flat that measure. See how that works? So you'll get the idea. Still fork down there. Have a little bit of a four bar sequence here, measuring starting at measure nine. A sequence is kind of like a repeated idea in music. So here, here, listen to measure nine. And here's measure uh, 11 and 12. See how that's just kind of the same music? You can maybe put some hairpin dynamics in there to kind of give that some shape. And then I would crescendo um, these last three bars into measure uh, 16. Oh, excuse me. Just make sure you end strong there. So that when you come in and measure 17, it's nice and soft, okay? Start with a fourth G flat here. I'll measure uh, 17. And then, and then when you have to go back to the G flat, regular. And then back to the fork on measure 19. Make sure your air push, you have to push your air through for that low C, all right? Um, so that, that low C in measure 18 speak. Okay. And here's another sequence. The six bars where kind of the same music repeats itself. Yeah, I can, you can maybe do some some hairpins again here. And then when you get right here to the crescendo, make sure you crescendo all the way down into me, into um, the low D flat in measure. What is it? Thirty six five measure thirty four. Okay. 
Uh... And then right here, measure thirty, um, measure thirty-three. Um, I would use my low D flat key for the A flats on the way down. You can do it on the high one. I tend to put it down on the on the lower one. See how I'm using the the. I'm basically using the low D flat key or low C sharp key as a, my G sharp key. So I just put my right hand down accordingly, going down um, to the end of that um, arpeggio. Okay, then right over here, starting in measure 35, we have a Fairling favorite. This is um, diminished arpeggios for four bars. You have four notes to, um, to worry about here. Uh, C flat, D, F, and A flat. And they just repeat. Make sure you start it strong. I can't play it. Okay, and then right there, measure 30, measure 39. We get to the G flat, regular here, regular G flat. Okay, and see how that's another sequence, four bars. Same, same repeated um, uh, idea. And then starting right here on this F um, in, uh, in measure 43, you have this um, slur two, slur two thing, but it's offset by one uh, eighth note, so it feels a little off kilter. So make sure you use the accents there, to, and that adds to the, to the kind of the off balance nature of this music right here. And then starting right here in measure 47. Um, this is not, even though the guide on TMA website says this is a verbatim repeat of the music at the beginning, it's not. It's a different dynamic, piano, and the articulations are different. So if you look, it's soft, piano. And then starting, um, then you slur into the D flat. Um, in measure 46, 47, 48, measure 49. Up at the top of the page, or top of the etude, measure three, you tongue that note. And then right here, you have this two bar slur starting there in measure, um, measure 49. And you slur into the E flat, whereas at the beginning it's tongue. So it is different, just be careful. Then starting in measure 55, we have another one of these kind of off-balance um, sounding uh, um, phrases right here. Because at the, the last note of measure 55 on this D, that you, D natural that you have an accent on, you start this kind of pattern of groups of four, which is weird because we've been playing in groups of six or three or so. <laughs> See how that see how that that feels kind of off balance. And then do that same thing I, t I told you over there in measure uh, 30, 33, 34 with the low D flat key um, using that for the A flat. The last note is only two beats. Don't like play this big old long fermata like like it's like oh I'm I'm at the end and I'm gonna play this really long. Two beats. Ba -ba 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 one two off off on three. Yeah. So and then that last line with those groups of fours. Um, that's a, that's a good um, way to do your crescendo into the forte. So maybe each one of those um, groups of four gets a little bit louder. So that's how I would use that to kind of get into my um, to my top dynamic there. Okay. Um, again, guys, make sure you're learning this in your eighth note pulse. Okay. And then when you start, you know, getting quick. I mean, I would do it all the way up to like, I don't know, measure, or I'm sorry, not measure, 
uh, like 160, 170. <laughs> And then that's 160 right there. And here's 180. 180 is probably where I would um, drop the metronome down to the big beat to the to the dotted dotted half note. So 180 would be 60 for the dotted half. And then from there, you can, you know, jack up the tempo as you learn it quicker and quicker. When you get down to the to the to the big uh, subdivision, the dotted dotted half note, every one of these um, clicks faster is going to feel quite a bit faster. So even from here, sixty. <laughs> The 63 even is going to feel quicker. See, I was a little bit behind. Um, but yeah, so that's how I would go about learning this, guys. Okay, scale. Make sure you learn the scale. You can learn the arpeggio too. I think it'd be great. Broken thirds if you have the time, you know. Just run that up and down. Um, and once you're there, you can... Make sure you're practicing it in the eighth, I'm sorry, the eighth note pulse, the quarter note pulse, okay? Learning all of your articulations um, and dynamics at the same time, okay? That's the biggest thing I got, I can, I can, biggest piece of advice I can tell you when learning an etude like this, or any etude really, um, is to make sure you learn all the aspects of it um, at once, the first time, okay? Don't go back and try to add things later because it's not going to end well for you. All right, guys, thanks for watching, and um, I'll see you guys later. Bye.